Many people who live in the East Bay are not aware of international humanitarian law or the importance of protecting healthcare in times of conflict. Although it's hard for us to imagine living in constant danger and insecurity, it's crucial for us to prevent and alleviate human suffering around the world in the face of emergencies by educating and promoting IHL throughout our community. Throughout our campaign, we used Instagram as our main source of views and engagements. While we tried using Snapchat and Facebook, it was harder to track the different accounts that visited our post. With our Instagram account on business, we could view insights which tracked the number of unique accounts that viewed our post and the comments we received to be counted as engagements. In addition, Instagram stories were another way to get a larger number of engagements if we included a poll at the end. Asking our friends to post from their personal accounts was especially helpful in reaching out beyond just the East Bay. When brainstorming possible events, it's important to be creative, but also to be practical. For the first month of our campaign, our plan was to present to as many classrooms as possible because we knew that in each class we could educate around 25 people. We contacted a teacher ahead of time that would allow us 15 minutes during a break in class to present a short presentation. The next places we targeted in the first month of our campaign were our school's Red Cross clubs and the regional liaison meetings as well. Each of our school clubs varied in size, but could average at least 15 people per club. Presenting at an East Bay Liaison meeting was also a helpful way to engage not just the high schoolers in our clubs, but those around the entire region. For the last two months of our campaign, we were constantly on the lookout for any creative events we could incorporate IHL into. We contacted our school's leadership program and asked if we could host a booth for IHL at the Cultural Fair. We made a poster board to aid us in presenting, and we were successful in attracting not just high schoolers, but parents and younger children as well. Another opportunity to teach IHL was at the Missing Maps Mapathon. After we finished mapping buildings and roads, we were able to present about IHL and relate the underdeveloped areas we had just seen to the harsh areas around the world affected by war. Although it was a small group, the Mapathon increased our presentation's impact and added another layer of meaning to what IHL is. One of the final events we presented at was the annual refugee simulation. We planned different modules designed for volunteers to experience some of the hardships refugees must face every day. Not only must they be physically fit enough to be accepted into a country that doesn't accept them, they must also remain mentally strong and manage to work with their families despite the conflicts that threaten to separate them. Afterwards, we led a discussion where participants could describe how they were feeling, and we reminded them that not only are these difficulties encountered every day for millions of refugees, but that war and instability can further aggravate their challenges. With a final IHL presentation, the refugee simulation brought us an added layer of understanding to how IHL can transform the lives of millions and why we need to be educating our communities about it. Organization is crucial for a successful campaign, especially when working in a team. We immediately created a shared folder on Google Drive where everyone had access to our presentation, feedback form and quiz, and any flyers we each made that could be used to publicize events. We had two Google Sheets as well, one for the number of people educated where we recorded dates, names, events, and emails, and then another sheet for our social media metrics where we recorded dates of posts, the platform used, account names, and total views and engagements. Additionally, as the team lead, I created a subfolder to upload agendas and meeting minutes. Although it seems like a hassle to write out, an agenda kept our discussions on track, and we could each review topics to be discussed before the meeting, so we were all prepared to share. After each meeting, I emailed the members of my team and our IHL supervisor, recapping the meeting that we had, and more importantly, listing out the goals we discussed, dividing them into smaller weekly goals and then larger monthly goals in order to complete our campaign. 
A huge part of this campaign involves the ability to reach out to other clubs, organizations, and schools that you can present to. It's important to motivate everybody on your team to actively seek out opportunities and to not be afraid to ask others for help. Besides posting flyers around school, we drafted emails that we uploaded in our folder that could be sent to an entire school, inviting them to an event we had. We also contacted the middle schools we went to, asking if we could present about IHL. This is where it's important to remember your audience. Be sure to keep in mind how your IHL presentation can benefit them and why it's necessary to have their support. Remember to stick to your plan. It's hard to stay motivated and meet each week, so keep each other accountable through a group chat, email, or social media. Plan events ahead of time and always track dates on a shared calendar so everyone is on the same page. There were many events we planned to host but never got around to due to timing. Ambitious and creative events are possible with just a little foresight. Keep asking yourself, have I completed my weekly goal? And is what I'm working on right now going to help accomplish my campaign goal? Keep focused, but take some time to reflect on your overall campaign as well. Always remind yourself what this campaign means to you. Beyond metrics, the IHL Youth Action Campaign has given us new friends, experiences, and perspectives that we will all take with us. You are a part of a movement that means more than just numbers. In order to help victims of war around the world, we must first learn about IHL, and in turn, hope that you will teach your community about it too. IHL is a set of rules which, for humanitarian reasons, seeks to limit the effect of war. IHL is made up of international treaty law and customary international, international law. Humanitarian law has therefore banned the use of many weapons, including exploding gun shells, chemical and biological weapons, and anti-personnel mines. The four fundamental principles of IHL include the principles of distinction, proportionality, military necessity, and prevention of unnecessary suffering. One humanitarian principle is to promote unity, so there's only one Red Cross or one Red Crescent within each country. Humanity means to prevent suffering wherever it is found. A fun fact is that the Red Cross is mainly ran through volunteer service and most of the participants are doing it voluntarily and not for personal gain. IHL principles are universal. Red Cross and Red Crescent societies operate worldwide and all societies are equal. The Healthcare in Danger initiative was launched by the International Red Cross and the Red Crescent movement to promote the safety and protection of healthcare services. Attacks against healthcare workers, hospitals, and ambulances disrupt healthcare services and deprive people of life-saving treatment. We should all support the Healthcare in Danger plan.